My guest is Johnny Paycheck. John, I want to clear up uh, something you've mentioned about a year and a half ago when you were on this show and also when you were on Popular as the Country. You mentioned a book, an autobiography about your life. And uh, it's never been out yet. What happened to that book, John? It is still... You and Freddie Hart have both had a book coming out for the last three, four years. If I had my way, it would be out tomorrow, you know. Um, it, uh, it sometimes, you have no control over it. And, uh, but that, that's what it is in my case. They have the book. Uh, Who is they? A publisher? Yeah, in New York. Um, also, now they want to rewrite some of it because there's been so many things happened since the book was finished. They want to put some more on the end. And, uh, so. Have you had a lot of people inquire about the book? Oh, Yes. A lot of people, especially after I mentioned it on your TV show. Well, according to my notes, the the book had two titles. One was Somebody Loves Me, mm-hmm. and the other was The Thirteen-Year Party. Right. What was The Thirteen-Year Party? What is the significance well, of the that Well, the significance title? of that is for 13 years I was um, out of it, <laughs> you might say. Were you an alcoholic? Oh, yes. Did you get over it? Yes. Did you go to AA? No. How'd you get over it? I just woke up one morning and did it. Yes. Because I realized I had to do it if I wanted to become anything and if I wanted to even live you mean any, it, it very was... much longer. I mean, it was really bad. And uh, so I just decided that that was it, and uh, I did it. So what uh, what years would the 13-year period span? Well, that would start from the time I was about... Well, I'd have to figure that out, of the actual years. But I was, a, I was a youngster when I started, to, you know, actually... Did you get on booze early in life? Yeah. Pretty hard to go cold turkey, isn't it? Just cut Oh, it yes. Off. Sure. Did you have sure, withdrawal... Pains? Yes. Did you withdraw and uh, not, uh, not want to be with people? Yes. That happened for to you? a little bit. Well, well you're to But be... I withdrew gracefully. I stayed off uh, the scene until I was able to to handle it, and then I went back to start working clubs, and I uh, I was around it and didn't want it. Well, how do you handle? I know how it is in clubs. You, you, the country singer's up there, and he's a good old boy, and another good old boy come up and say, "Hey, John, let me buy you a drink." I love your singing. How do you handle that? I always say thank you, but I, you know, I don't drink. I'll take a cup of coffee. All right. Now he might. As long as they can buy you something. He might react in this manner. He might say, "Oh, you're too good to drink with me." Uh, well, I've had that happen, and then all I do is I just say, "No, it's not that at all. I just, I can't handle the drink, so I don't use it." Okay. Do they? But use again, it? I'll take a cup of coffee if you want to buy me a cup of coffee. Oh, okay. I assume that happens a lot. Sure, it does. John, I put apartment number nine into this show, Tammy Wynette's first hit. Right. And especially because you're here. You wrote this. Song. Yes. Um. Uh, you know you wrote it. It's dumb for me to say you wrote this song. <laughs> no, it's not. You either wrote it or stole I, it. I, I wrote. Uh, I was uh, actually. Um, a half writer on it. Uh, Bobby Austin and myself wrote this song, um, but primarily everybody thinks it's my song, and and uh, you know. But I always like to give. Is there a credit. story? Is there is there some place an apartment number nine that about which this was written? Yes. Is that all you're going to say? That's all I can say. <laughs> no, but it's. You need uh, to reveal the rest would get somebody in trouble. Uh, it might. Okay. Was it in California? Uh, see, Cali- what are you doing? What are you doing? California's a big state. John. Yeah, California's a big state. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, no, not really. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, Ralph. I, all right, all okay. right. I know the real story. Okay. You told me the real story right. one time. Mean, you you, you were, see, you're trying to get me All in. right, you're afraid to reveal the real story for fear of getting somebody in trouble. Yeah. Okay. Turned out to be a hit song, though. And for Tammy Wynette, it was her record debut, and what a debut it was. Mm. Now, Johnny Paycheck. By the way, John, tell me about your wife. Who who are you married to? To whom are you married? I'm married to a young lady 
by the name of Sharon. You call her Sherry? Sherry. Mm -hmm. We have a new baby boy. That's uh, how old is your new he's, baby boy? He's 10 months old. Mercy. And a pistol, I'll tell you that. What's his name? Jonathan Bojangles Paycheck. Oh, come on. That's it. Bojangles? Yep. I know you made a record of Mr. Bojangles one time, mm -hmm. which was super record. Yeah. You he's named, named after the record, yeah. His middle name, you know. John? Jonathan what? Bojangles. John, now, what would you hang it on that poor little kid for? Well, he's, it's built in. He doesn't have to use it. I mean, he can go by Jonathan B. or whatever. He'll probably and if he wants to go in the show, what better name than Johnny Bojangles? <laughs> yeah, just turn out, take take the paycheck off. Sure. You know? All right. I, th I hope you know, he. I hope he. Doesn't. We call him Bo. I figured you would. <laughs> he's ten months old. By the time this show plays, he will be eleven months old. When is when's his birthday? April the thirteenth. Okay. Mr. Lovemaker, anything you remember about this particular song? No, I just remember I uh, wrote half of it on the plane and waited about three or four months and wrote the other part, you know. Did you uh, for forget about it for a while? Yeah, put it in the box. Did you ever write a song on a sick bag? Never on a sick bag, <laughs> no. You know, on an, on an airplane, when you're sitting there and you've got plenty of time to kill and you don't have any paper... That sick bag is the first thing you, that comes to your mind. Because yeah. It's just there in your in uh, plain sight. But I generally... It's a nice little white bag. Yeah, I gen those, are, those are good, but I, I generally, you know, just ask for a paper and a pencil. And they generally have it, you know. But I can understand if they didn't, you would reach for the sick bag. Sometimes while the records play, I, uh, I fish a little bit <laughs> with our guests. Sometimes I do it on the air. John... <laughs> uh, what sort of uh, Christmas show do you do every year for the kids? Well, we uh, have a uh, Christmas benefit show. This year I didn't get to do it because it was just so busy. I couldn't get to that part of the country. But Where do you do it? I do it in a little town called Greenfield, Ohio. That's it's your a, hometown? It's my hometown. And uh, we raise, uh, oh, two or $3,000 every year to buy toys for the kids in that area. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Anything peculiar ever happened there? <laughs> yeah. You asked me earlier about the most embarrassing thing that's happened to me, or if there was. And this, I uh, was doing, it was during the the Christmas show, and I was running just a little late. I run in and I dressed and I came out on the stage, opened up with a big bang, and, the, and my mother was sitting right on the front row, my sisters. And I seen my mother get up out of the, so you can come up. And I, I thought, what's I mean, she doing? Come up to the edge yeah, of the come right to me, you know. What's she doing, you know? And I leaned over, and she she said, your pants is unzipped. Uh-huh. And I stood back up. <laughs> Put your guitar in front of you? And I just reached, I'll tell you what I did. I just reached down and zipped him up, and I said, only your mother would be, you have guts enough to tell you that. <laughs> and the crowd went crazy. Bless her <laughs> heart. that, my face... I know I've Mama was just looking it. after you. That's right. What's your mama's name? Her name is Chloe. She, Chloe May. She proud of you? Oh, yeah. I figured she, she was. was. She's sitting on the front row saying, that's my boy up there. Yeah, that's my boy. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> John, uh, up in Greenfield, Ohio, when you were a young fella coming up, did you, did you like so many entertainers, enter all the talent shows? Trying to get a break. Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, I we entered the uh, high school contest, and we won. Went to a... Uh, that's another thing. <laughs> we won, and we went to WLW. In Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Big deal, boy. I mean, that's the biggest thing. You mean that was the prize? Was, yes. The biggest thing that ever happened to me. You know, I was only about nine years old, ten years old. Right. And I was doing a song called called Shotgun Boogie. The old Tennessee Ernie Ford thing. Yeah. Huh? And I forgot the words. <laughs> well, now, how, did you, how did you win if you forgot the words? Oh, I, did, I won at the school. Oh. But I didn't win on the television. Was this, a, were you a finalist against some other uh, amateur oh, competitors? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Out of the state, you see. You went down to Cincinnati? Big to... chance and I blew it. Did you get scared? I didn't want to come back home. <laughs> <laughs> did, you get, did you get scared? Yeah, I got scared. Well, being nine years old, I could see why. I think I cried after I got off stage. I was mad. Forgot my words. 
And I imagine uh, you wanted to hide somewhere. Oh, yes, definitely. I didn't want to go home. They kissed it and made it all well. You know, you've heard it all say. Did your mama, she have some comforting words for yes, you? Yes, don't worry about it. Okay. You know. Well, I mean, when you were 10, did you go back for another shot? No, I don't. I think I entered again when I was about 14, 13. Did you win that time? No, we didn't win nothing. You didn't win? When did you get beaten by a spoon player? Um, I'll tell you what it was. It was an acrobatic girl. You know, that could stand on her head and put her feet in her hip pocket. You know what I mean? <laughs> John, I really love the way you sing. Thank you, Ralph. Got to say I'm one of your fans. I appreciate that. John, for a while there, since you were last on this show, you got some, uh, you received some new billing. Uh, you were called... Uh, John Austin paycheck. Right. What, what was that all about? Well, that was for the theme. It was a, a theme concept. Con, excuse me, I'm bad as you. No, theme concept album, and uh, um, it was, of course, the the lead song. And it was eleven months, twenty nine days, and then we had a bunch of outlaw type material in it. And we well, did. What it. is outlaw? Type well, outlaw material? music is laid back, uh, do as you please. Uh, look like you want, don't care what anybody thinks type of music. But how do you put that in the grooves, make people understand that? I think it's the type of material mm -hmm. that you do. All right, now, in this particular song, 11 months and 29 days, that that particular, that's a sentence, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What's the sentence for? It's a misdemeanor. It's, uh, it's given out for a lot of things. One thing it's given out for is uh, grass. For smoking uh, marijuana, right. I mm -hmm. see. I mean, it, of course, there's lots of stiffer penalties in in other various places, but uh, in some places, eleven twenty nine is is, uh, is that what that's the, a year. All know. right, is that what you're singing about in yeah. this song? Mm -hmm. That was the sentence, the hero. The of The opening song. line is "busted in Austin." You oh. know. Now, did you jump on? Is would you say that you jumped on a bandwagon created by Willie Nelson? No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I can. Uh, show you where in 1959 I was what they call an outlaw now only back then you was called a dirty <laughs> what do you mean in 1959 you could have been called oh I was wearing outlaw. cowboy hats and beards and, and oh okay it's the manner, Levi's the manner in which you dress yes. mm -hmm. but that's part of it but I right. say uh, I was doing that years and years ago along probably other people was too but I was uh, it's a lot cheaper to go that way well sure it? I had to go that way back then but that's the way I couldn't afford the expensive about what we call nudie suits. No, but society wouldn't accept that at all back then. You know? Did they frown on your oh, dressing that way? Yes. Did you <laughs> wear cowboy hats? Oh, yeah. Well, I thought uh, most country music fans would like to see their favorite singer in Levi's and a cowboy hat. Well, they do boots. now, but they didn't in, then. In 59, they wouldn't accept it. And not only that, but the uh, the elite, you might say, the people who run the business didn't want it around. Your either. manager didn't like it. Uh, your record producer didn't, didn't like it. Record company. Booker, didn't all right, like you, it. Made you know it. what I'm trying to okay. say. Okay. Okay. John, I can recall a time when you wore tuxedos. Oh yes. Now that seems like uh, that's another another era. Uh, well, that seems like that would almost be a little too much for uh, uh, the country music crowd. Uh, Overdressed, I guess. Well, is what I'm yes, to say. I agree with you. Uh, I was being directed back then by other people. Okay. You mean you wore them and you didn't particularly want to wear I them? I didn't particularly care about it. <laughs> did you wear them on country music concerts? Yeah. How did the fans react to that? Well, it, you know, it's funny. Uh, no matter what I do, and I've found that over the years, they don't really care. I mean, it's, I mean, where it comes to me, I mean, they. I mean, the fans don't. They accept me any way I want to go. Oh, really? And even then, they, uh, they, you know, oh, I'd get some remarks, uh, you know. I went. I once wore a tuxedo in, a, in an interview situation. Homer and Jethro thought I were. They thought I was a waiter, and they came up and asked me to get them a drink. <laughs> oh. We were in the lobby of the Andrew Jackson Hotel, and I was interviewing people. They wouldn't let me go in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, they made me stay hid. You have some problems remembering all the details about your life, don't you? Yes, I do. I really do. Is that because of the uh, drinking problem you once had? Yeah, that and, um, uh, you know, 
everything combined. I think I first met you when you were just a young buck of about 19, weren't you? But just about 19 years old. You used to get in a lot of fights? Oh, I was in a lot of trouble. In and out of them, yeah, when I was younger. You got a temper? Yeah, but I don't, uh, I don't show it much anymore. I just try to ease along, you know. Uh, to, unless I, until I have to, and then, you know. In other words, you don't want to fight anybody? No. Do, do people uh, want to challenge the star in a nightclub situation oh, sometimes? Oh, yes. Step outside? But I generally have a, about a guy seven foot tall with me. I say, well, if you want, you want to step outside? <laughs> Here, uh, step outside with him. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't fool with that employ stuff. Employ a musician that's well, big I, as a truck? If he's not a musician, I employ him just for that. <laughs> Does that happen very often, John? No, no, really, really, all, all seriousness, it doesn't happen uh, very seldom. John, tell us about your new record. I have one of the hottest records I've had since Don't Take Her, and uh, it's called Slide Off Your Satin Sheets. What kind of a song is Slide Off Your Satin Sheets? Well, it's a story about the poor boy telling the rich girl who left him for money. Is he bitter? Mm, no, he just knows you know huh? he's sort of uh, he's telling her to slide off her satin sheets and get in her nice mink coat and come on over to see him oh i because he knows she will you know oh i see despite the fact that she went for the other guy with all the money uh he thinks she's going the come, love is still there uh, i see yeah. she's going to come on over right. his, i see she might want him to pay a couple of car notes or he might want her to pay a couple <laughs> yeah. of car notes right <laughs> that's right john are you named after johnny cash no, I'm named after a prize fighter, Johnny Paycheck. That's right. You mentioned that one time. Mm -hmm. When did the the original Johnny Paycheck fight? He was in uh, during the uh, Joe Lewis era, the uh, 1930s and 40s. 40s, right? yeah. Uh -huh. What what sort uh, of fighter was? Well, he, he was a heavyweight, and uh, he did real well. He he uh, until he got to Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis fought him in what they call the bum of the month. Uh, oh yes, remember those? And knocked him out in the first round and. That did it. Joe Lewis used to fight uh, a lot of fighters who should not have been in the, ri the ring with Joe Lewis, and they called that the bum of the month club. He would fight uh, just about one a month, mm -hmm. and then he would work his way back up to a big contender. <laughs> and I've never read, and I'm a sports nut, I've never read anything about this Johnny Paycheck, so how'd you find out about him? Well, I was reading the fight annuals. He's in the fight annuals, and I just, you know, I thought, what a great name, you know. But that was his real name, I assume. Oh, yes. Spelt the same and everything. Did he ever win any fights? Oh, yeah. He was a good, I mean, he was a good heavyweight. I hate to see you named after a loser. <laughs> no, he was a good heavyweight fighter. He just he wasn't good enough to be in the ring with Joe Lewis. I and see. that took the heart out of him. when Lewis took him out in the first, yeah. first round. Mm -hmm. How Take, long have you been Johnny Paycheck officially? Since 1965. But for years, I knew this this man sitting across from me as Donnie Young. Yep. And he, that's, that's, Donnie also is a that's a cutesy little name, but uh, it's like for a little guy. Yeah. Oh, my little old buddy Donnie Young. Yeah. <laughs> little Donnie Young. I let him call me that. Did it upset your uh, your mama when you changed your name? A little bit. A little bit. She uh, for a while she didn't really understand why I had to change my name. I mean, she gave you but that I, name. Yeah, and I, but I tried to explain to her that about the show business, and she finally understood. You know. All right, what was your real name in Donald what? Hmm. What was your real name in the beginning? Donald what? Lytle. No, no, no. Your middle name. Oh, my middle name. <laughs> yeah. Come he, on. <laughs> I went. I went he, through this the other day with somebody. Didn't want to, Donna Fargo. Didn't want to give me her, her other name. Eugene. <laughs> Donald. That's not bad. Donald Eugene Lytle. Eugene, you better get in here. You know, I, I always thought Your mama that was, used to say that to you? No, but I used to have a buddy named Eugene. His first name was Eugene. <laughs> I think his mother used to always say, Eugene, get in this house. <laughs> Boy, Eugene, what a name. <laughs> John, tell me about a character in Nashville named Deadeye. Who is Deadeye? Deadeye is my partner. He's a heck of a guy. He's about... I don't want to offend him. Um, I'd say he's uh, 
Uh, well, 70 years old. Mm. Is he an entertainer? He might be younger. I don't really know, but he uh, he works in a place called Printer's Alley here. That's what's and it? he, uh, what they call ballyhoos. He walks up and down the alley and invites people in, and he's got a big silk top hat and silk tails, you know. Well, he's like a, a barker at a carnival yeah, there. But he, but he has got a, he's got a way about him. He's got his own, there's only one dead eye. And every night when we're, you know, I'll do some appearances down there, and he'll come in, and he gets up on the stage, and... And we'll call him up, and he does a couple of the old-time things. Uh, I mean, he sings? Yeah. When you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. And he does uh, another one. Then he ends with summertime, you know. And he, and, and, Can you sing like Dead Eye? No, I don't think so. You were doing it a while ago, going out the door. <laughs> <laughs> when you smiling, <laughs> you smiling. I love him. I think he's the great. He's the greatest thing. Why do they call him Dead Eye? I don't know. All I know is that they've called him that from Basin Street, in New Orleans, clear up to here. Well, if you ever uh, did, he work at Basin Street? Yeah, oh yeah. He's worked with a lot of. He worked with Al Hurt, uh, a lot of them, you know, in his day. I was going to say for the tourists who ever visit Nashville, Printer's Alley is the is the. Uh, it is. A, it's an actual alley in Nashville downtown, where most of the nightclub action can be found. And right. all these all these uh, clubs are next door to one another, all in line. And mm -hmm. uh, they have a club called the Western Room, where you sing. Right. Are, are they going to name a club after you? Yes. So that's going to open in mid-June of this year. Is that in the it's same be, area? Yes, just across the, the alley in, in the old building there. They're going to remodel that whole thing, and uh, the new club's going to be in there. It's, it'll be called Johnny Paycheck Showcase. Hey, that's great. That that knock you down? Yeah, I uh, I really like that, and I'll appear there uh, myself, you know, but it'll be a very nice club. Around four, seats around 400, and then we'll have good food, dancing. and uh, I'm going to charge you for this commercial. Oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that must be a, a, a heck of a thing to have a club named after you. I I really enjoy it. I think it's uh, nice. Johnny Paychecks what? Showcase. Showcase. Mm -hmm. John, I'm checking my notes here. You've been fired by the best, haven't you? Oh, yes. Yes, I've worked and been fired by the best. You just called it right on the head. Who fired you, John? Oh, I've been fired by Ray Price. I've been fired by George Jones. Baron uh, Young? Uh, well, I... Yeah, I was fired there once in hard back, too. Right. I forgot about that, yeah. Didn't you... <laughs> I assume you were a bad boy for a while. I was a rogue. You can believe Would that. Would they fire you and then rehire you when you straightened up? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you were always one of the best tenor singers to ever come down the pike, I thought. I think they thought the same thing. Uh, I think that... Uh, do, do the harmony part. Yeah, that... Uh, I think maybe because I did do their material well with them that that was one of the reasons why they would, you know, give me another chance. So how, many, how many careers have you had with George Jones? Oh, let's see. George and I started, uh, became friends around 1959, and I was with him through 1965, off and on. So for about seven years, mm -hmm. six years. Six years. How, how long were you with Ray Price? Uh, well, I was with him around three years, off and on, in that same time period. Oh, you mean you'd leave one? You'd leave George's band, and go to work for Ray for mm -hmm. a while. Work with Ray for a while, and then go back with George a while, and go down the pike a while. I don't know. I just. Uh, Farron Young. How long did you work with him? I worked with Farron around uh, a year. You also you know, recorded again. with these people too, didn't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. And made hit records with them. I uh, I did. Uh, a lot of things with Farron. I did uh, a vast amount with George. And well, I did just a few with Ray. Did Hard uh, Heart Over Mine. With Ray Price? Mm hmm. 24th Hour. Who, what were you? You were on the nutty song uh, 4033, 4033 with 4033. With George Jones. I'm a People. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, those things. How know. about with Farron Young? Oh, let's see. I, oh, that's too far. I can't remember. I was on uh, some pretty big ones. When you were on Country Girl, I know. Country Girl. Were you on Hello Walls? No, that was just a hair before me. But I was on Country Girl and a couple others right over there that did well for him. Who else did you work for, John? Any other biggies? Uh, well, I worked for Skis McDonald on the coast. Uh, so you were, you were everybody's favorite side man and harmony singer, yeah. weren't you? Mm. Now, is it difficult to break the image of side man when you want to be a star of your own? Yes, your own? Uh, it is in a way. Um, I know. Uh, 
after when I quit in 1965, I had A11. During those years, you know, and I had, A11 was a song. Yeah, A11, Jukebox Charlie, um, Wherever You Are, some things like that. The word Don't big monkey records, with another monkey's don't monkey. Don't monkey with another monkey's monkey. Son. <laughs> no, but. Uh, <laughs> Though those in that time when I was trying to be, you know, it was hard to break that image. Of course, when I hit "Don't Take Her, She's All I Got," that record was so big that they had to back off. You okay, know. what do you mean back off? Well, I mean uh, get off, change get their off minds? your back. You know, <laughs> you might say. No, I've had other. Uh... They had to admit, well, okay, he's finally made it, but but uh, before that, they, you know, it's hard to break that image. We have mentioned that you were fired by George Jones, by Farron Young, by Ray Price, and then you'd go back to work for them. Mm -hmm. They'd fire you, I guess, to, to get your attention. Sort of slapping your hands, to get your attention. <laughs> Did, have yeah. you had, but now that you've had bands, have you ever had to fire anybody? Uh, well... Are you tough to work for? In the beginning, no, I'm not. Uh, I had, once I organized uh, my, uh, the, the ones I wanted, they were, they was with me for almost five years. Same people. Okay. And then you were an easy going boss. Yeah. I liked not to even be the boss. You know, I didn't I didn't uh, present that air in my huh? organization. You know what I mean? You didn't want to. Oh, uh, they, they knew I was. I didn't have to tell you them. You didn't want to seem bossy. Then. No, I didn't want to have to tell them. And I never did. John spent a long time with George Jones as part of his show. And I assume you were his. Uh, shall I say, a, a financial consultant? Didn't you go out uh, with George and help him buy a horse? Oh, yeah. We bought a couple horses one time. Uh, he was buying an albino, and I was, I mean, uh, he was buying a uh, Appaloosa, and I was buying a good cutting horse. Uh, we both got cut on the deal, but it wasn't with the horses. I, mine, he, he wound up getting an albino. It wasn't worth a nickel. He thought he was buying a, a real expensive horse? <laughs> yeah. He paid a lot of money for it? Yeah, he paid a lot of money for it. I said, boy, George's eyes don't look right, buddy. Eyes, that's the way they're supposed to look. Why did George Jones want a horse? Well, we both wanted one. Why? Well, I lived down in Texas on a... This was before he got his ranch. You know, he eventually got a ranch, and he got some good stock. He got, had good horses. But this was just in the beginning. He was thinking about being a rancher. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about being a rancher with him. And we... Bought these horses. Mine run off the next day. I never did see it again. <laughs> you pay a lot of I money. paid three hundred dollars for mine. And it ran off. Bought him at an auction. See. Oh, well. Yeah. I, uh, what did George pay for his? Gee, I don't know. It was about a thousand dollars for a horse not worth yeah. a nickel. It wasn't worth a nickel for what he wanted. He wanted uh, Appaloosa to breed by. You know, mm -hmm. with the bloodline. I knew there was something funny when we didn't get any papers with him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, John, what else have you written? Now, we've mentioned that you wrote, I'm talking about big songs, Apartment Number 9, and you wrote Touch My Heart. What else? Uh, recently, I wrote Once You've Had the Best by George. George Jones. Jones which went to number two. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I wrote Mr. Lovemaker, then I did, which was a number two song. Um, See, I don't think I don't I don't think you have an image as a songwriter, and yet, a few times in your life, you have written blockbusters. Yeah, you still write a lot of songs. Yeah, I write a lot of them. Uh, it's in my albums and things. Um, I haven't written a blockbuster, as you say, here recently. You can still make money though off of an old hit, can't you? Oh, Doesn't sure. You still trickle in. You make money the rest of your life once you write. You know. And I'm writing all the time. Um, but how long has it been since Touch My Heart was out? Oh, that was in 1966. Okay, it's been 10, 11 years. Mm -hmm. How much money, I'm just kind of curious here, how much money can you make in a year now, 11 years later, on a song that was so big? Well, that's hard to say because that song is in like 18 or 20 albums other than Ray's. I mean, you know, Charlie Pride did it. Oh, uh, other people have done it. Uh, or, uh, can you can you make a thousand dollars off of it? Oh, sure, sure. Two thousand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's not going to tell me a whole lot, is he? <laughs> you figure your tax man is listening? If he is, <laughs> he might be. <laughs> no, you you do you do all right. All right. 
I, but, I get yeah. the impression you're hedging. <laughs> now, if I were from the IRS, you'd be a little more specific, wouldn't you? Wouldn't well, you? I would have to be, wouldn't I? Now, John, uh, when you leave town this week, I understand. Let me, let me back up a little bit. Okay. Last year, we took this show to Texas. We went to Dallas, and we uh, taped Ray Price, and he was talking about getting all of his old boys back together, the ones that had played with him from time to time, and uh, it was quite a roster. Now, I want you to take it from there. Well, um, when I leave town, I'm uh, going to... Uh, well, this will actually happen on... Uh, Happens next week. Uh, next week. Okay. Yeah. And we are all going to gather in Fort Worth, Texas, at the Coliseum. Ray will headline the thing, but it's a reunion of everybody that ever worked for him. Right, who's going to be in the show? Well, it'll be Willie Nelson, myself, Buddy Emmons, Darrell McCall, <laughs> Johnny Bush, Roger Miller. Uh, Should be all the old Cherokee Cowboys then. Everybody, yeah. I've certainly enjoyed our little visit here. Listen, let's get together and do it again real soon. I, I always enjoy coming up and visiting you.